Hi, it's Steve, sponsored AMD test driver, and it's time to get started on this build. We've got the Fractal Design Arc Media Revision 2 case that we'll be building in, and the first order of business is to open it up and then uh, install the power supply and then install the optical drive. The power supply has got a, a large fan on the bottom and we've got an air intake on the bottom of the fan so I'm going to point that side downwards so that it's just going to draw air in from the bottom side of the case this direction on the bottom side of the case and it'll spit air out the back the hot air and then there's four screws that are going to hold the power supply onto the back and we've got a some accessories here, a little box of accessories that includes all these screws that comes with a, a case. I got to put the, the optical drive in here. Uh, that means I need to remove one of these front one of these front um, I don't know what you call them knockouts, I guess. So that just pops out. You can see here all you need to do there's two little tabs on either side and just release the tabs and then this piece will come right out the, the front. Alright, the optical drive is going to go in here. Got to be careful, there's a little bit of wiring right up here at the corner that's coming from the, the top control panel. You need to make sure that's out of the way. Just kind of gently push it so that you don't crimp the wires. And then go ahead and insert the drive and then it's going to need some screws on either side to hold it in place. Okay, looks nice. Since this case has uh, a window on it, I decided it might be nice to put some lights in there. And I think now is probably the right time to install them. So let me show you what I've got. I purchased one of these. It's an inexpensive LED light strip, which I'm going to place, I think, on the top side, uh, on the interior of the case. And then I've also purchased one of these. It's a little five LED light unit. These are also very inexpensive and these just plug in with standard Molex plugs and I'm going to shine this out the front through the front grill and what should happen is the light should sort of diffuse through the front grill and it'll create sort of an interesting looking pattern uh, when you look at it from the front which hopefully I'll be able to show you once I get this thing up and running. So let me start with the uh, with the light stick. Um, I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top off and then I'm going to zip tie this thing in. Okay, I've elected to uh, rotate this middle drive cage, and the way you do that is remove these thumb screws, 
and it's very simple actually. All you'd have to do now is you pull it towards you. This whole middle drive cage comes out. And if you look on the top, it's got these sort of four little raised circles, almost like a Lego. And what you can do is, just like a Lego, you can turn it this way and plug it back in and it will just slide right in. And thumb screws go back in now on the side. And you've got your rotated drive cage. By having rotated that drive cage, it leaves a little ledge right here. And that's a very convenient place for me to mount this little set of lights which is going to shine through the front. It's going to sit right there behind the uh, the drives. So now it's just a question of how to attach it. It comes with a little velcro stick on and that's probably what I'm going to use. Okay now by moving the cage as, as I did what you can see is that the cage is actually let me point this towards you directly the cage is actually off-center with respect to the front face. And so I want this light to shine through, but I also want it to be centered between here and here. Okay? And so what I need to do is I need to measure this <clears throat> in order to know exactly where to mount the light. Okay, so I've got my light in place. Hooray. This is one of the drive sleds. It has the ability to mount either a 3.5 inch drive or 2.5 inch drive, all of which are mounted by, by uh, putting screws in from the bottom side. So you simply lay the drive in like this, and then there are four screws that will come in from the back side to hold the drive in place. In the case of the three and a half inch drives, there are these uh, four uh, rubber bushings that are in place. You put the screw through them, and the and the rubber um, helps to uh, uh, eliminate any vibration or absorb any vibration. Uh, that's not uh, an issue with most of your two and a half inch drives, so there are no rubber bushings, and you simply screw in uh, directly through these holes right here. And so I've already done this. So here is the the SSD and it's on the front side just sits like this. And so here are the four screws that are holding it in place. And then I'm also going to be putting in a standard three and a half inch spinny disk drive. And uh, so it sits like this and then it's being held by these four screws here. So that's how that goes. And I'll go ahead and place these into the case. And this just snaps in place. And there we are. We've got the two drives now mounted and ready to be cabled up. And now it's time to put the motherboard into the case. As you can see, the case is now down, lying on its side. And I'm going to move you in here to get a little bit of closer view. <clears throat> Here's our motherboard, which we will be putting into the case. And so here's the interior of the case. First order of business is to take this, which is the I.O. panel, which goes in between the motherboard and the back of the case. And this is going to snap into 
a little cutout location here. This thing is very thin and has a little bit of flexibility to it. And it always takes a little bit of effort to just get it all lined up. These things are just stamped out so they don't always fit perfectly. And you kind of have to play around with them a little bit to make sure. Okay, now the motherboard is held down onto the motherboard tray with standoffs which are what the motherboard sits atop of and screws which screw into the standoffs and go through the motherboard so if you look down here there are a total of six brass standoffs they look like this this is one of the brass standoffs and as you can see it's just threaded at this end. This is the end that goes down into the motherboard tray. And then it's threaded on the top side, which the motherboard sits down on top of this. And then you put the screw down through the motherboard into the top of the standoff. And so we need six of them because this is a micro ATX board and it happens to hold six of them. And so I've already inserted five of them into the case. And here's the sixth one. It just screws in like that. You want the standoffs to be relatively tight because you don't want them to back out of the uh, of the case if you need to unscrew the screws later on to remove the motherboard. And I will clear this out of the way, this cable, and bring the motherboard in. Here we come. All right. Now it's a question of getting everything to line up. You may have to push a little bit against the, uh, the IO shield. Check that the ports line up, and it looks like they do. And now we need to get our screws. Let's see what it looks like. Not bad, huh? Well, now what remains is to hook up all the power and data cables and then uh, get those tidied up a bit and then we should be uh, ready for the, uh, the first formal uh, boot up and testing. So um, that'll be coming up next. Stay tuned. Finally done with the cabling. And here it is, this uh, chaotic mess of cables, which uh, fortunately is on the side that's going to get covered up. So if we come around to the side of the case that's going to be visible through the window, it's not quite as messy. I'm sure somebody will still complain about it, but I like how it turned out. So I think all in all, pretty nice and uh, now it's time to fire it up. <laughs> 